Hi friends, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Gio. Today we're going to do chapter 13 for The Dark. South Dome. Medical. Ian. I leaned over and rubbed Rias's cheek. You had me worried, I whispered. I had me worried too, Rias whispered back. Last night should never have happened. Rias wasn't ready for that kind of exertion. I'm sorry, I said. This is my fault. You're exhausted because of me. Rias lay in his bunk back in medical, conscious. The nanite cuff back on his arm, with IVs and sensors back on his body. I don't have any regrets, Rias said, weakly. He placed his hand on mine. About us, or last night? I said, but the last one haunted me. Your aunt said it was my fault the Adi Shachar crashed, and I did this to you. I am sorry. Rhea shook his head, his eyes tearing. I saved you, the captain, and a cat. I'd do it again, any time. You died for me. I'm not worth it, I blurted out before I could hide my pain my insecurity. Rias took my hand and kissed it. You are to me, he said. It was just us in our old room back at medical. Doc had gone to tend another patient, and I stared at Rias's dark eyes, wiping my organic finger just below one. It came away wet. Why did you save me? You didn't even know me. You needed help, and I would do it again because I love you, Rhea said. My heart froze. A small fear filled me. That's what scares me. Why, Rhea said. As tight as I could, I pulled him close, so my mouth was only a centimeter from his ear. Saying the words broke my heart. We both know I have to leave when the captain comes back. Rhea's color had returned. He showed a little life, and a brief smile flashed across his face. That gives us plenty of time. I sighed and held his hand, and whispered, I love you too. Now rest, I'm not going anywhere. Someone must have heard us because they chuckled. Rias was asleep seconds later. I took his hand, placed a wet cloth on his forehead, and wished Guaca was here to lay beside him. Asleep, he looked so vulnerable, so fragile, and he didn't have any regrets. I loved Rias. Something about him banished the fear I felt, but not the fear I felt for him. Seeing him so weak was almost a physical pain. It's called Nightingale Syndrome, Elias said, stepping up behind me and adjusting the readouts for Rias. You mean his marrow? I asked. Doesn't have anything to do with that. It's when a person falls in love with the person who saved them. Usually it's a doctor, nurse, or an orderly, but it can apply to anyone, Elias said. Is it bad? I asked. It's normal. A lot of times it's only one-sided, but with a little bit of patience, a little care, it can turn into something that lasts. That's how I met my wife. Lower tram line collapsed. She was trapped. I was first responder. And for the week she was in medical, we grew close. A few months later, we were married, Elias said. Happy ending, I said. Elias laughed, keeping it quiet so as not to disturb Rias. We have our rough patches, like anyone else. But yes, happy ending. Why did the tram line collapse? I asked. I don't know. It was one of the new lines to South Dome, so it wasn't very old, Elias said. Are you and Rias growing close? I nodded. He saved my life, and he keeps saving it. I'm happy for you, Elias said. Elias left, leaving me alone with my thoughts. Until I had to pilot again, I would sit by Rias while the nanites restored him to normal or as normal as he could get. It gave me time to plot the Adi Shachar's course. Madre, 
I am Ian Alvarado, and I'm trying to plot the final course of the Adi Shachar. I need access to all available navigational data. Innocencio Alvarado, unlimited access for all files connected to the Adi Shachar confirmed, as granted by Director Reinhold Gunther, Madre said, through my data pad. Wow, Mr. Gunther was a powerful man. There were so many incoming files that my data pad froze. I bet Rias's data pad wouldn't. Rias's overbuilt data pad made mine look primitive. His could have handled this amount of data easily, but I had to work with what I have. Rias did bring his markers. Doc would hate me for this. I checked my data pad again. It's still downloading files, I muttered. Pulling the markers from the pouch on Rias's waist, I got to work. Rias wasn't the only one who could draw on the floor. My drawings weren't as precise as his, but that didn't matter. Trade me data pads for the day, Rias said, his voice soft and weak. Its dual AI processors should handle anything Madre can send, but keep that part secret. People already know I've upgraded my data pad. They don't know how extreme the update is. It's none of their business anyway. Datapad, download all information related to the Adi Shachar, especially course and navigational information. You're supposed to be asleep, I said, but I took his datapad. You better pretend when Doc comes back or he'll knock you out. I'm feeling better, Rhea said, but I think it was a lie. Download complete, Rhea's datapad said. That's fast, I said, and compared it to my downloads. They had barely started. Look who's alive, Gutierrez said from the door. How can one person cause so much chaos? You've got news, I asked. Perlita's trying to appeal her removal straight to corporate, but her request has to travel with Mr. Gunther on the Orion's belt and might take weeks or even months to process. Get this. One of the rumors going around the dome is that your meticulously organized apartment drove her crazy and she attacked you. That's why you're in medical again. Your ex, Manuel, said that it almost happened to him, but he'd been living with you for months. Perlita only lasted five minutes. Who's second in command? Rias asked. Emilio hasn't decided. He's still trying to figure out where to put Perlita. The logical step would be your place in the mines, but she doesn't have the strength or the skills. Hydroponics needs extra people to help repair the pods, but she doesn't have the skills for that either. It might be food courts, but she can't cook. Let me know which one so I can go to the other, I said. Gutierrez smiled. Rias, sorry about this, but it's time for Ian to earn his pay. We're off to Smiling Minds, which should give you, Rias, lots of sleeping time, and Ian, lots of thinking time. Ian. MRD-1, en route to the Smiling Mind site. Shuttle 2. The Smiling Mines were an orbital facility located sunward about seven hours away. Once course was set in its AI, the shuttle took over. It gave us hours to do nothing. We carried the next shift of ten people stowed in back, as well as new supplies. Once unloaded, we'd load ore, take the old shift back to Nuestra, and they'd find the food court. The packed food was good, but not good enough. Me? I'd find Rias. I took first watch while Gutierrez went back and chatted with the miners. That gave me plenty of time to work on the drone trajectory problem. Rias had loaned me his data pad while Doc rebuilt the fragile nanite colonies inside him. The engines of Shuttle 2 are far less powerful than those of the Adi Shachar. They only gave a faint vibration, not the deep thrum of grav engines, or the electric buzz of jump engines, or the fury of grav engines on full burn escaping the raiders. The frantic terror of that hour crept through my body. My hands took over the console, moving as they did back then. Robinson, get out of there, I whispered. For a moment, I was back on the bridge of the Adi Shachar. They've got target lock, Gallagher had yelled. Ian, plot a course for Nuestra, Captain Rowan had said. My foot kicked a small object under the console. Guacamole? My foot had hit the side of the console, not the cat. Guacamole was safe on Nuestra. I shook my head and blew a breath out. 
I'm on Shuttle 2, not the Adisha Char. They were completely different ships. But the vision seemed so real. Was this PTSD? Maybe I needed to talk to Doc about it. A thin sliver of fear sliced through me. I set Rias's data pad on my lap and stared out the viewport, hoping there were no raiders in this area. I wish you were with me, Rias, I whispered. Last night, the fear had disappeared as we discovered our love. As I thought of Rias, I remembered last night. It drove the fear away. I'll be careful next time, I said. I wish I had my CSM, but Rhea still had it and needed it more than I did. What do you know about a CSM? I said to the data pad. Let's see what this rebuilt data pad can do even though it's not connected to Madre. It brought up plans for a new project Rias was designing, a CSM, and to make it difficult he included a lunar module. Together it would be about the size of two fists. Look at the detail he wanted. Every panel and rivet and decal. He even thought about making the different sections detachable. And he included lights and a display stand that rotated the CSM. A simple build compared with the arm or his other projects. Something he could create in his sleep. When I thought of him, a spark of pride and love flashed through me. That made me smile. Just wait till I get back home. I needed to focus on the drone problem. Madre had downloaded everything into the data pad, including timestamp of the original drone launch. As I matched the drone's movements to that of the Adi Shachar and of the raiders, I chuckled. The raiders had flown past the drone soon after it launched. They wouldn't have had time for a shot. They might not have realized what it was. There goes Rias's idea that the drone might have been destroyed. At its slower speed, it would have shot behind Nuestra. Given its last known speed and direction, and assuming it didn't hit anything, or something didn't hit it, 30 days travel would place it within shuttle distance. It would be a bit further out than the Smiling Mines, but within traveling distance. The drone was fast, but the shuttle was faster though neither one was as fast as the Adi Shachar. My old ship wasn't as fast as a Dagger XF. It was the end of my shift, and Gutierrez came back to the cockpit. I showed him what I had come up with, and he looked over my calculations. We'll need extra supplies and lots of coffee. What are you doing day after tomorrow? I went back to the others to get some sleep. They wanted to see my arm. The general consensus... Rias can be annoying, but he does good work. You should have heard Manuel talk about sharing a room with him. To think Perlita was finally demoted after five minutes in that apartment, a miner said. Tiptoeing through all the parts, Manuel couldn't throw his clothes anywhere but in the closet. Kitchen was lined up like a machine shop. Poor Manuel couldn't take it, another miner said. Zacharias couldn't build like Rias does. Neither could his mom. God rest their souls, so no one knows where he gets it from, a miner said. Here you've moved in with him, another miner said. Just be careful you don't move something out of place. You don't want to go crazy like Berlita. Another miner spoke. He had a beard and laughing eyes. I bet Rias kisses like a toaster. A lot of us think he's a robot. Nope, a woman said. I know his type. Rias is no machine aside. I bet he's a real devil in bed. The image of Rias's kiss from the other night flashed across my mind. I must have smiled, maybe even blushed. I knew what she said. Manuel wasn't man enough to bring it out. Does everybody on Nuestra know everything, I said? Yep, we do. Cost of capital and all. The rest of the trip they slept. I worked on trajectories. Orbital projections changed, depending on speed, but the general direction was the same. It was in a part of MRD-1 Madre had little knowledge of, except for some of the bigger asteroids. According to the chart, it was near a large asteroid, exact size unknown, if it had made it that far. Once at the Smiling Mining Complex, it took all of us to unload and reload. 
When it vanished my arm and shoulder reconstruction, I could lift more. Of course, I had to show off Rias's work. Ten tired miners boarded with a load of ore, and off we flew. Both Gutierrez and I launched, but I had first shift. I want to show you something, and right now I wish Rias was here to try one of his overpowered tricks, Gutierrez said. What is it? I asked. Keep it quiet, Gutierrez said, closing the cockpit door behind us and sealing the wheel lock. There's an anomaly at extreme scanner range. It showed up for a second, then backed off. The terror had come back. We're being followed? Shuttle one? I asked. It's not the other shuttle. They're headed out system for jump gate maintenance and are even farther from Nuestra than we are, Gutierrez said. Datapad, I said. I loved what Rias had done with it. Check our scanner log since we left Nuestra. We think something might be following us. Checking, it said. We're not connected to Madre and it still functions? Do I even want to know what Rias did to that thing? Gutierrez asked. You'll have to ask him sometime. I said. Including AI modules in a simple project, like a prosthetic limb or a data pad, is not illegal. Just unheard of. Artificial intelligence modules were generally only included in larger construction projects, like the Nuestra complex or a ship or heavy machinery. Rias had never told Gutierrez what he had done. Why not? Task finished. Displaying results. An object has appeared on our rear scanners 17 times. Probability of being followed high, the data pad said. For a moment, the fear I had felt on the Adi Shachar returned. I stared at the results and back at Gutierrez. Is this what happened to you before? Gutierrez asked. More or less. Seven hours to home. Ideas? I asked. None, Gutierrez said. Then we keep flying and pretend we haven't seen anything, I said. Can you work magic like Rias could and boost scanner range? Gutierrez said. I don't know how Rias's brain works, I said. How he can do the things he can do is beyond me too, Gutierrez said. Let's give him a chance later. Datapad, copy all sensor information and flight data from this trip. Classify it as Rias, top priority, save us, I said. Gutierrez smiled and said, that will get his attention. Listen, let's keep this quiet until we get home. No sense in panicking the others. I set the data pad on the console, shifting screens to the drone trajectory chart. You're right. Go get some sleep. I'll keep watch. I can't sleep anyway. Not with this going on. When Gutierrez was gone, I pulled up the data pad. Time to see what you can do, Mr. Dual AI Processor. Data pad, sync with the shuttle. Focus scanners to the rear. Can you extend range? Negative, the data pad said. Can you get a better image when it comes into range? I asked. Affirmative, it said. Do so. Alert me the moment it happens. How soon can you connect with Madre? I asked. Six hours, forty minutes, it said. Connect at the soonest moment possible and upload what we have discovered to them and make sure you have a copy for Rias to look at later, I said. Actions noted, it said. While I waited, I locked us onto the Nuestran beacon, adjusted our course to get a little better time, and tried to work on the drone's trajectory. In my head, Gallagher said, they have target lock. Robinson, get out of there, I said. An hour later, the data pad flickered to a different screen. Incursion detected. I was suddenly afraid of what I would see. Yes, I was nervous, and the slight tremor in my prosthetic displayed it. The artificial nerves were more sensitive than my real ones. Datapad, show me on the main monitor, I said. An image appeared, the, with basic stats near it. Indistinct. It could be a variety of ships. One thing was certain. It was much smaller than the Adi Shachar, which meant no jump engines. Whatever this ship was, it needed a carrier. Did Rias upload the stats of a Dagger XF to you? I asked the data pad. Affirmative, but I do not have enough sensor information to confirm. A cold chill ran down my spine, and I didn't think I wanted to hear the answer. Do you have enough information to prove it isn't one? 
A dagger XF remains a possibility, the data pad said. A dagger is fast. I'd seen the stats and seen two following me a month ago. We couldn't outrun it, not in the shuttle. It could destroy us, and we couldn't do anything about it. But it didn't fire. It only followed us. But they had destroyed the Adi Shachar, a much faster ship with better armor. And, like us, it was minding its own business. Why had they shot at us? I pulled up the previous incursions and their timestamps. The first one was only an hour after we had left. No one was paying attention, and it lasted only a second. Only an hour after we launched? That meant the dagger was just outside the Nuestran scanner reach. They wanted to stay quiet. Whatever they had been doing, the Adi Shachar had posed a threat of some kind, and in destroying it, the raiders had revealed themselves. It also meant they were keeping an eye on Nuestra, or an eye on something or someone in Nuestra. What was so important about Nuestra? Or maybe they were waiting for something. Information, perhaps? A covert transmission? Somebody might be feeding them data. What did a Nuestra know that was so important? Maybe the communications array on board the Adi Shachar had intercepted something, perhaps a data transmission meant for the raiders hidden in a navigational update? That meant that the drone would be critically important to us and to them. Mr. Gunther's project just became my number one priority. Thank you, friends, for joining me for this chapter. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Peace.